Hi everyone, my name is Kip Cryer. I'm one of the orthopedic doctors here and I specialize in foot and ankle um, here at Memorial. Um, a little bit about myself, I was born here at Memorial. I uh, grew up in Moss Bluff and I've been away for the last 10 years but I'm glad to be back home. Uh, so I'm giving a little talk on foot and ankle arthritis. Like I said, I specialize in foot and ankle. Uh, did some extra training to uh, specialize in that. Um, um, and a lot, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know exactly what arthritis is. So arthritis is when you wear out the cartilage. So it's the same in the knee, in the hip, the ankle, or the foot. Uh, when you wear out the cartilage, which is kind of that cushion inside the joints, um, it causes pain, inflammation, um, and stiffness. Um, so this can be a, a debilitating problem if you have um, pain in your ankle to the point where you're unable to walk. Um, so if you look at you know, some of these x-rays here, um, I've got a um, PowerPoint here. Um, you, you can have a lot of different um, stages of arthritis. So in the early stages, um, you might notice some swelling, some pain, uh, but once it gets significant bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, um, you're going to have pain with every step. You're not going to be able to move that joint much at all, um, and it can really change your lifestyle. Um, uh, so as you can see here, the arthritis, um, as it uh, degradates and you have the bone-on-bone -bone, uh, damage, um, there's really not a whole lot you can do um, to rebuild that cartilage. Um, for whatever reason, our, our bodies were made so that uh, we just don't have good blood supply to the cartilage, so there's no magic procedure to um, bring that cartilage back. So, like I said, you can have arthritis all over the body. Some of the more common areas would be the hip or the knee. Um, the uh, common procedures for hip and knee arthritis would be a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Um, it's a little bit different when you, once you get to the um, ankle and to the foot. Um, and arthritis is a little less common in the ankle and the foot. But um, by the time you get to about 70 years old, uh, about half of people will have some arthritis in their foot. Um, ankle arthritis, a little different than knee arthritis and hip arthritis. Um, it's not nearly as common and usually unlike hip and knee arthritis, it comes on just with wear and tear. Um, ankle arthritis is usually due to some old injury, whether it's an old ankle fracture or an old um, sprain that you had. Um, it can cause cartilage damage that kind of slowly gets worse over time. Um, there's a lot of things you can do for it um, before you start thinking about surgery. Um, mostly anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, Aleve, things like that. Uh, weight loss is very helpful um, because anytime you are walking, especially downstairs, you can put as much as five times your body weight on, down on your foot. So um, that can be very painful. Uh, injections can help for, for some short amount of time, but usually aren't a long-lasting relief. Um, and then braces, like you can see on this uh, slide here. They can make custom braces that help support your ankle um, and decrease the motion in the ankle. Uh, when that happens, it can help the pain. If all these things don't work, uh, there are options for surgery. Um, when you start talking about surgery for ankle arthritis, classically, um, you do surgery with a fusion and you can see here, you put plates and screws in there, and the goal is to basically have the two bones of the ankle fused together so that they're one bone. So it does limit your motion. You don't have any motion in the ankle anymore, but you do have still motion in your foot. Um, and people get good pain relief with this. Um, but again, the downside is you do have some stiffness. One of the newer procedures is an ankle replacement. Um, it's similar to a hip or knee replacement. You, you replace the joint cartilage with metal and with plastic. Um, but it hasn't been around as long as hip and knee arthritis um, or hip and knee replacements. Um, and for that reason, it's not 
quite as good results, but people typically do well. Um, and over the last 15 or 20 years, um, the implants have gotten a lot better and people are doing a lot better with it. Um, the issue with this is um, it can eventually wear out. So it's possible that you could need another surgery later in life if you have it when you're younger. Um, so for that reason, um, it's not typically a good idea um, to do an ankle replacement in a younger person or if you're very active because you can wear your, out, your ankle replacement out quicker. But overall, ankle replacements are doing much better with better implants. Uh, the most common arthritis in the foot uh, is arthritis in the big toe. Um, now this is similar to the ankle or any other joint. It causes stiffness uh, and it's very painful um, anytime you're walking and um, pushing off with your, um, with your big toe. Um, a lot of times you can actually feel a bump on the top of that toe also. Uh, at the base of the toe, um, and that's this bone spur that also often comes with the arthritis. Similar um, to ankle arthritis, um, you want to wear something that supports uh, that joint so that you're not having a lot of motion through that joint. Um, try to avoid high heels, um, uh, very rigid shoes. Um, there are some shoes that uh, you can get that have a round uh, or rocker bottom to them. And this is kind of take some of the motion out of that joint and put it back into the ankle. Um, you can do injections. Again, injections usually aren't a long-term solution, but they, they can help with the pain. Again, so we try all these things um, um, preoperatively, but if they don't work, um, there are surgeries available for big toe arthritis. Um, the kind of quickest recovery and, and easiest surgery for it would be what's called a chylectomy or a bone spur removal. Whenever you do this, you're really just taking off the area with the worst arthritis on the top of the joint and you're taking off that bone, bone spur and it helps get your motion back um, and it's really good at relieving pain as long as the arthritis isn't really bad. Usually once you have bad bone on bone arthritis in this joint, um, this isn't going to help all of your pain. So uh, if you start talking about bad arthritis in that joint, uh, a fusion in that joint is usually the best option. Similar to the ankle fusion, you use plates and screws and get these two joint or two bones of that joint to fuse together. Um, it does cause some stiffness, but people typically do pretty well with it and they're able to play some um, some recreational sports, golfing, tennis, things like that. Um, it's just uh, not very easy to do more intense sports like running and things. There's a new uh, implant, um, kind of a joint replacement for the big toe arthritis. Um, and there are some, some studies that say that they, people do well with it, but other studies not so well. So. Um, it's not simply something I uh, suggest unless um, someone really wants it. Uh, it can take a long time to recover from also, um, and you can have some swelling and irritation from that implant for up to a year sometimes. Um, but it is always an option. Um, uh, most of the arthritis uh, in the other parts of the foot um, is usually due to some type of old injury or a deformity. Uh, flat foot is one of the more common issues that people have that can lead to some arthritis in the um, hind foot or the back of the foot or the mid foot or like the mid area of the foot. Um, uh, flat foot's a very common um, deformity. Um, sometimes people are born with flat foot and never have an issue, but usually if you develop it later in life, um, it puts a lot of stress on the joints in the foot. Uh, and it can lead to some arthritis in the foot. Um, there are a lot of other things that can be associated with flat foot, like tendonitis um, and uh, inflammation in the ankle also. Um, but um, arthritis is um, uh, one of the significant um, pain generators if you do have that. Um, 
so typically the first thing I suggest if you do have flat foot and you're having some uh, discomfort from this is wear supportive shoes. So this is kind of a um, overall um, supportive shoe wear is good for most uh, foot and ankle issues. Um, if you can find something with a good arch support, um, that can help kind of uh, support the arch and not put so much stress on those joints. Um, there are custom braces you can also get. Uh, these actually fit to your foot specifically. Um, and this is better as your, your flat foot might get worse or you're having arthritis in the back of the foot or the middle part of the foot. Um, and this helps support those joints so that you're not getting so much stress through them. Um, if you do have flat foot, uh, before the arthritis starts setting in, uh, there are options for surgery. Um, and there's a lot of different types of surgery you can do for this to help recreate that arch, but uh, it usually involves um, making cuts in the bones and sliding them um, over to help uh, support the arch again. Um, and people do well with this, uh, but if you do develop um, arthritis that's uh, significantly painful um, in the hind foot or the midfoot, really the only options for that surgically uh, would be uh, fusions again. So you can try all the other things we had talked about before, supportive shoe wear, braces, um, injections sometimes help, but uh, fusions in, the, in this area of the foot that have arthritis would be the only uh, good surgical option. Again, that does cause stiffness, but it's really good at relieving pain. Um, so in summary, you know, arthritis in the foot and ankle, it's not quite as common as in the knee or the hip, but it can be debilitating because you're, you're putting stress on those joints every step you take. Um, the goal is to relieve pain, right? So a lot of times that means uh, we might um, be using a brace or doing a surgery that causes stiffness, but um, as long as we can get rid of the pain, that's our ultimate goal. Um, and again, we don't, we don't even think about surgery until you've tried multiple non-operative options, but um, there are multiple surgeries we can, we can try for foot and ankle arthritis. Um, so, just a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody has not developed arthritis by the time they're in their, let's say, late 50s, are they still at risk to develop it later on, or is it something that they maybe can check off the list of things they need to be worried about? No, you can develop it any time. Um, so if you have old injuries, you're more likely to develop it, and you might develop it younger. Mm -hmm. um, but, no, you could develop it at any time, really. What about genetics? Does that play a role? It does, and mostly... Uh, more of the deformity side, right? So if you're more apt to have, say, like a bunion or a uh, flat foot, something like that, which is genetic, um, then you can develop arthritis from those deformities. So what about preventative stuff? Let's say I know my father and my grandfather both had arthritis with deformities, um, and I am at possibly could develop those same things. Is there anything you can do preemptively before you have to get to surgery and that sort of thing? Well, it's really just supportive shoe wear. There's, no, there's nothing that we know of that you can, you can really do to, to stop progression of arthritis. Um, but um, anything that supports the foot um, is going to put less stress on those joints, so theoretically it would uh, decrease the risk of arthritis. We just don't have any studies that say that it, it necessarily would. Well, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.